what's up everyone so today we're going to be talking about dev container and we're going to use neovim inside dev container all right first of all what is a dev container it's a container that's configured for development so you will have your, all your development tools and all that stuff installed inside the container now there is a specification called dev container by microsoft uh they're basically like uh define some features that we could have to use containers efficiently for development and there is a application called dev container cli that basically implements this specification i think it's also from microsoft though it's i think uh under mit license all right first of all let me show you a demo of dev containers here i have a spring boot project and i have a directory called dot dev container inside that i have another file so let's open that up it's called dev container dot json here we define the specification for the project uh, so basically what i want is a container of ubuntu then i need to uh, i want uh, dev containers to add these features into that uh, base image we need uh, dev, uh sorry jdk 19 cradle maven and some other new of stuff okay to run the container i can run dev container up and i can set the workspace folder so this is how it would um uniquely identify the project you are working on okay hit enter you can see it's uh spinning up a new container it might take some time um then this is the id of the container you can see if i run the same command uh, once again it will reuse the existing container instead of creating a new one uh, then to use neovim i can run dev container exec then here i can add the command i won't run neovim and if i open up the project explorer you can see i have all my project content already mounted into the container that's cool i can open up something like um demo application and it's running the jdt ls that's the language server it might take some time okay yeah now we have jdl jdt ls running here let's say i want to import maybe um auto wired you can see everything is working as expected auto import is working code formatting is working uh then we have uh what do you call this project lens or something we have the number of references uh this thing is where this thing is being used and all that stuff so yeah we can de develop um using neovim inside the dev container pretty simple right um yeah now this is pretty much when it comes to demo i'll just now talk about the theory so let's go back to the um, presentation disclaimer you don't need to have dev container cli in order to use same set of features you probably can uh, get away with just docker cli however it's a little bit annoying to manage you know when especially when you have like multiple projects uh so why dev container I would say the main advantage would be the reproducibility i mean in container in general we have that advantage say you want to uh set up the development en environment in a new laptop if you have a dev container all you need is uh docker cli and dev container cli that's pretty much what you need to get started then easy to add features and share the features with uh other containers you know pretty much all the main language features like rust a compiler java uh, jdks um, node.js and all that stuff already there uh, defined by microsoft so you, you just add them uh, but if you need to create one then you can um, there's a startup project for creating features as well so the one i'm using i'm using a application called um, an application called look at me to show this presentation to you that's actually running inside a container and i have created a new feature for that uh, to to install look at me inside the container
then yeah managing containers are easy because you don't have to worry about container ids and names and all that stuff uh, just based on the project we are working we can uh, interact with the container i mean in my case i have just simply added a base image however you can have a docker file as well as a docker compose file if you have multiple services to run all right so uh, next one is editor support um vs code is mainly supported however neovim is not so i'm not going to talk about that uh can i use neovim yes of course because uh using docker cli we can open up a sudo terminal as long as we have a terminal we can use neovim assuming uh the thing actually can run neovim then there is another way that's to use server client uh, architecture i guess um if you're wondering how to use that you can just run this command right here to start up a server inside the container and in the host machine that's going to be your client um you can run this command to connect to that obviously you need to expose the port 88 um 8888 uh that's there and make sure you are using the nightly build because i couldn't get it working uh, in the stable build i don't know why all right now these are the steps to um get started pretty simple you just define dev container json inside the project you want to uh use it then you can uh define the specification then you can run the container app to spin up container and connect to it using exec uh, then there are some other options you could use uh, for example if you have changed some stuff in the specification and if you run uh, the container up again it's not going to spin up a new container it's going to reuse the same thing now to uh, apply the changes you have to run uh, the command the same command with remove existing container flag so it will remove the existing container and rebuild the image and run a new container uh, then obviously we are in your vim users we customize things to our liking and obviously i don't want to use someone else's configuration so how do i do this um, obviously you can mount like you would do in uh, docker cli so the flag for that is mount here i'm going to bind it to a uh, file location in the local file system or the host file system this is the source source of the uh, uh, file system sorry source of the volume um, in my case it's astro and Vim because this is the uh, user configuration location for astro and Vim. however if you are using uh, your own config configuration then dot config nvim is the one you should use uh, once again this is the target within the container and if you are using uh, one your own then this should be nvim inside dot config directory all right now um say you have a team of um i don't know 20 and none of them are using neovim and you might have trouble with the team to uh, you know get this uh, added to the uh, dev container now in that case you don't have to worry you don't need to even have these uh, features defined in the dev container json you can just get rid of them um, or not they not add them at all instead you can use this additional features flag and define the feature object that you want to add additionally on top of the things you have inside the uh, dev, dev container json so here instead of look at me you can add neovim um, all right so if you want to personalize the container more uh, say you want to have csh uh, configurations and all that stuff installed you can pass in just dot uh, files repository flag as well uh, with the url to your dot files um however you need to make sure that you have uh git installed inside the container all right let's talk about some of the disadvantages i mean containers in general so resolves most of the package conflicts however 
there could be some uh, scenarios where you will still face some package conflicts for example i tried to uh, use java 21 to um, use spring boot uh, 21 project however i couldn't get the uh, jddls working the language server working because it's uh, limited to java 20 uh, so in that case i have to install java 20 and java 21 both and somehow um, maybe create a wrapper to jdtls to um, run jdtls in java 20 and run the project in java 21 i think nowadays you can use um, nowadays you can use uh, gradle to install the jdk as well um, i'm not quite sure but i think i have seen that um yeah it's fun to create uh, use features however not so much to um create them because end of the day it's bash and bash is annoying uh, especially if you are working with something like alpine then you don't even have bash you only have sh and that's even uh more annoying to work in all right um containers are not 100 percent reproducible i would say this is more of a security disadvantage let's say uh you're using the latest tag for something in my case it's ubuntu latest right uh, i don't know why this yeah uh, i'm using ubuntu latest here so you cannot guarantee that you can reproduce the same image in maybe a few years or maybe a few months but obviously this is just a tag you can ob uh, obviously use and use a specific specific version here right however still you cannot guarantee that the uh, author of the image uh, has not um, override this particular image so that's one disadvantage it's more like a security issue i guess so that's pretty much it um i will put some resources to get started with uh dev container cli in the video description below thanks for watching have a nice day